Good afternoon, dear colleagues and friends. Let's wait for the rest of the audience before we start. Meanwhile, we would like to invite you to our web portal webinar.utic.eu, where all the previous recordings of webinars and interviews are stored. In the video section of our main website, there are files and videos from the UTIC conferences of 2013 and 2014. Last week we listened to Alexander Leshinsky's sorry, presentation dedicated to a new but fast-growing service, Video Remote Interpreting. Today we continue the video topic with Olga Melnikova, who will tell us about localizing a video with right subtitles. Our today's meeting is going to be hosted by me, Stanislav Bogdanov, Chief Operating Officer of the UTIC 2015, and me, Valentina Kozlova, CMO of the Ukrainian Translation Industry Conference. Let me share some information about Olga with you. Olga Melnikova is a project coordinator at Fenga Global Translation and Localization Company. She works at its U.S. office. She holds a master's degree in Translation and Localization Management by Middlebury Institute at Monterey and two BAs in creative writing and teaching English and French. Olga worked as a freelance translator and interpreter for seven years. She also volunteers as an admin of the FUSI project website and as a localizer for Future Actually charity fund in Russia. Olga is an amateur winner of the Logjam 2 video game translation contest of 2015. Wow, Olga, that is really impressive. And uh, now it's time for me to turn it over to you. And before I do that, I want to ask all of our attendees today to send your questions in the chat window. I will ask all of them in the end of the presentation. So, Olga, you have the mic. Thank you, Valentina and Stanislav. Um, before we start, uh, I wanted to apologize for doing this presentation in English because uh, I'm trying to sound um, international, but I understand that the major part of the audience today will be Ukrainian speaking and Russian speaking. Um, so probably um, we, we will do the following. We can, um, after you listen to this webinar, we can create subtitles in Ukrainian and Russian for this video. And you'll see uh, how easy it is, and uh, everyone will be able to do it. Uh, and uh, before we start, let us ask a question to the audience. Um, uh, Valentina uh, offered this great idea to ask you what level uh, of dealing with subtitles you have. Um, probably, if you have never done subtitling before, uh, you probably are interested in theory maybe, or more in practical training, or probably you have uh, managed uh, subtitling projects as a project manager, or even uh, worked as an engineer. So whatever information you have, please share it. Uh, we would like to, to hear from you. And uh, so let us start with a short video. That is called Subtitles from Northern Iraq. Once a stronghold of forces loyal to captured dictator Saddam Hussein, the city of Tikrit, here in northern Iraq, is now firmly under the control of American forces. Or is it? These members of the Iraqi resistance movement... Once a stronghold city of Tikrit, I'm sorry. here in northern Iraq, is now firmly under the control of American forces. Or is it? These members of the Iraqi resistance movement, still loyal to Saddam Hussein, think otherwise. The Americans tell lies. Each day our forces grow stronger. Each day we move closer to our goal of driving the infidel... What are they? Nothing. Carry on. Uh, driving the infidels from our motherland. Uh, we are not afraid to... Are they subtitles? <laughs> they, they are, aren't they? No. Well, what do I need subtitles for? Can't you understand what I'm saying? I studied English at the bloody American University in Cairo. 
Well, obviously, I can understand what you're saying. Oh, you, you'll see how they condescend to us with their subtitles. Oh, maybe it's a teletext, you know, for the hearing is there. <laughs> teletext? No, a lot of TVs come with teletext nowadays. Uh, wait, 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 say something again. My friend has an atheist... Hey, atheist how come he doesn't need subtitles? Well, obviously, he's comprehensible. No, I'm not! Look, I you... speak perfect English. She sells seashells by the seashore. Peter Piper, Peter Pecker, Pickle Pepper. Round the ragged blocks, the rag... Oh! The situation remains as dangerous and volatile as ever here in northern Iraq. While the rebuilding continues... What? what? I can't understand you speak English! But where is your subtitles now? Who? You think you're so good? Look at me! I Kerry Downs, Iraq. Shut up! <laughs> okay, uh, I see that a lot of you have done something with subtitles and this is impressive because I haven't expected that but okay uh, probably you will be able to add to what I'm saying or like share what you're thinking of this presentation and before we start um, um, we are used to always cite our sources so my first source is Elsbieta Pitlika she's an account manager at Venga Global and uh, she's a real subtitle titling professional. She knows everything about them and um, she really helped me a lot with this presentation. Uh, I, I'm sharing her knowledge with you here as well today. And um, uh, the second one is Max Troyer, Translation and Localization Management Program Coordinator at Middlebury Institute of International Studies at Monterey and he also created a subtitling training uh, and um, I'm using his material quite a lot uh, here as well. And uh, of course my dear Venga Global team uh, who helped me, um, Errol Cleary, Dennis Boyd, Carla Vargas, they are project managers and uh, localization engineers. And of course internet, I will give the links under uh, the respective slides. Um, so, I'm happily employed in Venga Global Inc. It's a localization company and we have offices in several countries but our headquarters are in San Francisco and we are um, basically we are doing localization for a lot of clients but mainly for uh, companies that sell cloud-based services and we are managing quite a few of uh, subtitling projects as well. And here is the agenda. Uh, it is quite um, long, but I have divided uh, this into three parts. And the first one will be a kind of an overview, uh, probably the basics of subtitling and best practices. And uh, um, since this platform um, doesn't allow me to show you it in real time, I have recorded uh, videos with um, practical training uh, and um, so uh, these are f short five minute videos and they will be at the end of each part so the first one will be about how to create an SRT file or a subtitles file in subtitle edit a subtitling software and uh, the second one is um, uh, more diving diving more deeply into um, subtitling, uh, a little bit of technology, uh, so, but first, project workflow, um, subtitling projects workflow at Venga, and then subtitling software and subtitle formats. And uh, uh, it is ended by a five-minute workshop uh, translating the SRT file uh, in a CAT tool and styling it. And uh, the third part, will be a rewarding part, an entertaining one, um, a little bit of comparing um, several ways of video localization and um, also studying our national phenomenon uh, voice over dub. And uh, we will um, wrap it up by um, a video about how to create subtitles on YouTube. 
Okay, that's enough. Uh, let's 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 jump uh, in, um, into it. Um, so now we have uh, localization video localization booming, uh, and uh, we have our um, one of the greatest Russian uh, movie directors, Andrei Tarkovsky, who in his um, book uh, Sculpting in Time said that uh, videos and movies, uh, they are basically the most powerful art form because they're combining uh, a lot of other art forms and um, they, the, all these art forms strengthen them, uh, each other and um, uh, that's why we are now um, kind of living in the age of videos and movies. And um, uh, and as an example um, of the fact that people are now unfortunately <laughs> stop reading and um, prefer watching uh, videos instead um, is that, for example, help text files, uh, they are replaced by short videos. And in this case, it's of course very handy. Um, in this case, it makes sense. Uh, and another um, um, a good uh, expression is that um, so here in the US they like this um, expression uh, one picture is worth 1000 words uh, I, I have never heard about it when I lived in Russia but I googled it uh, and it turns out that Con Confucius uh, the a Chinese philosopher first said it Though I had impression it was Steve Jobs or uh, Elon Musk, uh, because it, it sounds so modern, but uh, it can be um, expanded, saying that if one picture is worth 1,000 words, then one video is simply priceless. And it is um, basically... Um, it is what Tarkovsky uh, meant uh, when he wrote his book uh, much earlier. Uh, okay, so what is a subtitle? Uh, everyone knows it, but here is a definition. And basically, these are chunks of information that uh, are translation of what is being spoken at the video, and uh, it is... Um, time-coded and uh, it matches uh, certain parts of the video. And uh, we have uh, several uh, types and the first classification is burnt-in subtitles. They're also co called open. Um, these are um, kind of hard-coded in the video. They are always visible and we can't uh, toggle them off. Uh, and there are also soft subtitles. They are also called closed, and those um, those are changeable, so we can we can disable them. And also another one, uh, another classification is uh, subtitling within the same language. Uh, this is for deaf people, and in case if we have difficulty hearing the speaker, uh, they are also called captioning. And also across languages, what we are used to mostly, uh, foreign language films and television. And in the introductory video uh, we saw, um, so those subtitles were um, under A, they were burnt in because we weren't able to, <laughs> to turn them off. And uh, they were also um, under letter B, they were captioning because um, we had difficulty hearing the um, Iraqi um, uh, soldier. And let us move on to more interesting stuff. Um, so best practices, uh, we would start uh, them by mentioning that um, this is these are actually two different medium media because um, oh, th th there is a spoken word and there is a written word and uh, um, it's not, they're not identical. That's why we will have to adapt them. Um, just, oh, I forgot to, to, <laughs> to mention that rendering meaning. Uh, we, are, we are not translating word by word, by, but we are rendering meaning. And we can um, do without uh, a lot of junk words, but also um, all the words basically that you think uh, are not relevant, uh, but that 
if 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 they're not dead, won't undermine the meaning. If you're if you're sure it it is, for example, it's like questions. Um, let's say Venga is a great company, isn't it? Uh, so isn't it a basically can be uh, avoided? Uh, then the the next one is. Um, Ideally, subtitle appears on the screen when the person starts speaking and disappears when the person stops speaking. Uh, it's an ideal situation, but it's better to, to stick to it. Um, and also, um, basically, uh, the, the viewer should be watching the video and not mainly reading subtitles. That's why, though reading is definitely involved, um, subtitles should be as invisible as possible. Um, so the, the, the viewer should still be, uh, be able to focus on the video and um, uh, so the, the aim of basically subtitle styling and formatting uh, is all about uh, making them less visible. And um, uh, here come uh, the examples. So first, um, the position should be horizontal, bottom of the screen, and aligned to center. It's obvious, but uh, it's better to uh, state that. Um, and uh, the bot bottom of the screen can be one third, but more more specifically, like uh, in professional subtitling, it's considered to be uh, two twelfths of the screen, not more than that. Then, um, when we have a two-line subtitle and we are breaking them, um, we should not split uh, semantic and grammatical units like uh, you see here to you. A preposition is, uh, um, is on the first line and you is on the second line, so they shouldn't be divided. And um, sometimes it's, it's difficult to balance all the, all the best practices, but Sometimes you'll have to do trade-offs, but um, uh, it, it's still, it's still, this one, I think this one is very important uh, because it really looks bad when, uh, um, when it's splitted, where, when it, where it shouldn't be. Uh, and here uh, come the formatic ru formatting rules. And so these are not, of course, uh, set in stone. And in general, I wanted to mention that uh, the rules I'm giving here, they are kind of, they're good and they're, they are good in, very, in many cases, but they are not universal because there are always exceptions and uh, uh, different cases. But, so these are kind of um, most used in the industry. Uh, and. Um, here the font uh, should be sans serif and, for example, Arial, but not necessarily. Uh, color um, is preferably white, but in some cases it can be yellow. And I will show you later uh, in which cases. Uh, then uh, there are uh, several very important effects that um, make subtitle, subtitles more understandable and uh, so easy, easier to read and, and um, again, this makes them invisible because ease, ease of use, ease of reading, uh, it's, it's everything in subtitling. And here come shadow, outline, and black or gray background. And the next five slides are taken from the training developed by, by Max Troy and he really well showed here the, the nuances and why why these rules exist. And this is just a simple white subtitle without any styling. Uh, and you see it's not um, it's not too easy to read. This one is better, but yeah, much better. Uh, so and what is added here? A shadow is added. Uh, and you, you see the difference is very striking. And here come, uh, comes the yellow subtitle. Why? Because probably when we have such a busy background and especially two, 
too too much uh, white color, like the pants of this woman, and uh, they are white, and it makes it difficult to read. So yellow might be better in this case. And here you see an outline, uh, and this this is already much much better, and uh, you almost don't have to uh, to force yourself to <laughs> to see. What is there? What is written there? And finally, the black background uh, makes subtitle very well um, visible. And uh, just I wanted to draw attention to the fact that it's not actually black because you see that it's transparent. Uh, since if if we use the totally black box, it will uh, hide. I don't know one one fifth of the sl of the uh, picture from us, and it's not desirable at all. So, so transparent is better. And then we have have four golden rules of subtitling. I put them here because they're kind of relate. They're related to to numbers, and numbers are always difficult to remember. So. Um, we will um, consider them more in detail now. And two-line rule is very simple. Uh, no, not more than two lines. Um, not three lines, not four lines. And it's better to have one. But it's not always possible. Uh, and if it's one line, it should be, of course, a bottom line. And if it's still um, two lines, the high line should be shorter than the lower line. This is because, again, um, we, sh we need to see the picture. And uh, everything that is that goes up, it prevents us from seeing the picture. And this, this is why one-line subtitle should always be at the bottom. And this, th this is the reason we, we are using this rule here. Now the rule. Uh, my subtitles are not visible to <laughs> to well either, but um, I just wanted to show here that um, a too long line uh, there it's really difficult to read, and that's why they invented invented this um, forty character limit. Um, a little bit more is um, um, possible, but not too much. Not too much, and um, for different languages, we have different character limit. Um, so 40 is easy to remember, and these are for Latin uh, alphabet. So this limit uh, applies to these languages, and for Cyrillic alphabet, for our languages, it is a 35 uh, character limit. And for Japanese and Korean, for two-byte two languages, it is 14. Uh, and for Chinese characters, it is 16, and it's it's actually a lot um, because uh, Chinese characters um, they they have very extensive meaning, and uh, so the chunk of information we have in 16 characters it's really it's a lot. Uh, and uh, let's move on. Then we have six second rule that says that um, the subtitles shouldn't be on the screen for more than six seconds um, because otherwise you you start rereading them and six seconds it's already it's too way too much usually it's around three four four and a half seconds but six seconds is an absolute maximum and uh, uh, the minimum is also so some some references say that it's one second, but it's probably wiser to uh, to put 1.5 seconds here because otherwise it's it will be a flashing effect and it will be um, hard to, just to, to catch <laughs> this subtitle. And finally the gap rule, uh, it, the gap can is really small, it's 0 0.1, but it should be there, otherwise Subtitles—they just again um, 
they kind of overlap and uh, they, they should be this small, very small time when, when the reader has this pause, <laughs> this gap. And here is our first workshop, how to create subtitles in subtitle edit. So first of all, <coughs> um, this, uh, th the format of this file will be SRT. This is the most popular universal um, format. Uh, you can, you can uh, uh, view your subtitles in uh, text editors like Notepad++, uh, Text Wrangler for Mac, but basically in any text editor, very simple, even Notepad, <laughs> if, you, if you open, you'll see it. And uh, uh, the software I'm using is free. Um, and uh, so for, for this workshop, you will need uh, a video, of course. It's better to do a transcript because um, it is easier to break it uh, into, into smaller uh, parts later. And subtitle edit. Um, and let us just watch it. Let's open subtitle edit. First thing, go to options settings, video player, and check VLC media player, hit OK. Go to video, show hide waveform, video show, show hide video, and you will have all the controls enabled. Now load the video. Current human. Go back to the beginning and we are ready to create subtitles. Open the script and break it into chunks of information. These chunks will be your subtitles. Copy the first one. Go back to subtitle edit and hit insert new subtitle at video position. Here in the text box, paste your subtitle. You see the line length is 43 characters and one of the golden rules says it should be no, not more than 40, so let us break this subtitle into two lines. Put the cursor here and hit enter. Perfect. And now let us play the video until the speaker ends to pronounce this subtitle. Current human capital management system with and the end time will be the end time of our subtitle, so hit set end time. And now we're ready for our second one. And hit insert new subtitle and paste it. It has 63 characters, which is way too many. Let us break it into two lines. Yes, that's, that looks good. You see the higher line is shorter than the lower line, so one of the subtitle rules, subtitle rules is also observed. Now, let us wait until the speaker pronounces the, this text. Something that has been commonplace throughout the industry. Hit set and time. And we're ready for our last subtitle. Insert new subtitle, paste, and here you see this one line. Subtitle has 33 characters, so we are good. For at least a couple of decades. Set and time. Now one of the golden rules also says that the duration shouldn't be more than 6 seconds and it shouldn't be less than 1.5 seconds. Here you see it's all good. Uh, also, you remember another golden rule says that there should be a gap uh, of, a, of about one, of about 0 0.1 seconds. So let's do this. Let's decrease it by 
0 0.1 seconds. Let's decrease our first one and our second one and the third one as well. That's it. We can now play the video. The current human capital management system was something that has been commonplace throughout the industry for at least a couple of decades. We can now export it before you can go to source view and see how your subtitle uh, file will look like in Notepad or in any text editor. Here you see the time coding and then the two lines of subtitles and they're also numbered. So go to file. Save as, subgroup, it's fine, so let's say save. Okay, uh, thank you for your questions. Uh, I see quite a lot. Um, so, uh, again, there are so many things to talk to tell about subtitles. We will probably not cover everything, but um, um, I will try to answer your questions uh, later. And um, so here comes the the second part: um, um, our subtitling project workflow. We have it Venga, and uh, um, I wanted to mentioned that uh, this is a sample workflow, of course, because everything depends on the client and uh, on what the client wants. And I briefly saw a question about I ISO and the standards in the United States. Um, I think there are, there are some, but uh, basically what the client says, uh, so we do that. Obviously, they, they operate within these um, regulations, uh, but mainly uh, they just provide uh, their requirements and uh, so we, um, we, we meet them. This is, this is um, how we do it. And also I saw a question about the reading speed. Uh, yes, the reading speed exists uh, and it, also, it was also shown in subtitle edit. Um, this is a very good software that allows you basically just to not to care, to care about anything because if something is wrong, it will show it in red and otherwise you are good. And um, um, so uh, going back to the workflow, first uh, we get the video and um, we create a transcript in Word uh, and sometimes the client already provides it. So we skip this step uh, and then we create an English subtitle file. This is what basically we did. Um, we have just done it uh, in subtitle edit. Um, we first create an English SRT because it is easier to, um, to process it later uh, rather, rather than first translate and then create an SRT. But again, uh, it's not universal for some types of workflows, um, it can be different. Then we are putting the file into the CAT tool. Um, in our case, it is MemoQ, I will show you later. Um, uh, then uh, um, we do translation editing, proofreading, and uh, when, then we export the um, uh, subtitle file. Again, SRT, or it can be another format. Uh, we can export SRT and then convert it into another format again according to the client's uh, preferences. And we do post-processing. Uh, it means uh, adjusting times, um, cleaning, um, again sticking to the rules that uh, the client gave to us. And after the file in target language is created, uh, there is a lot of uh, in context QA because there is it's it's always uh, like this. You create something and then you need to clean. Uh, and uh, we have our linguists um, check the subtitles 
by watching the video and actually reading them uh, and uh, they make changes that uh, they uh, report to our engineers and uh, the engineers implement the changes then there's another round of QA and basically this this takes quite uh, quite a bit of time and now we can move on to subtitling software um, so it is it is a very vast topic and I of course cannot um, cover everything here and especially there there's lots of uh, software uh, but these are basics um, th these are free um, uh, and uh, these three first um, uh, they are really good so visual sub sync um, it is less intuitive than subtitle edit but it's also good um, for subtitle creation uh, you can also use it it's free um, uh, also an editor that uh, shows you what's wrong uh, in case you need to change something Th these these are for windows and um, we have um, AG sub I guess it's pronounced AG sub um, this one is also uh, for Mac and for Windows and uh, it uh, includes formatting because with um, the subtitle file you saw it's just plain text timing and numbers and that's it no formatting with AG sub you can uh, do formatting and it is also free and uh, there are burnt in or open subtitles uh, software um, like Handbrake and MKV Merge but frankly speaking I have never dealt with that um, and basically it all depends on uh, preferences of the company that is doing subtitling and also on the budget because uh, there are very powerful tools uh, that are extremely expensive and they have very high professional videos um, and um, there are also plugins, uh, so things like that. It is all about the technology level of the company and uh, again the budget. Uh, and uh, I just put here again uh, a picture from Subtitle Edit uh, just to show you that uh, it it is read everywhere. It something it sees something wrong. And for example, like speed reading, um, speed of reading, uh, it's it's um, exceeded here. So you can always correct it. Okay, next. Uh, subtitle file formats. Uh, again, lots of them. Uh, but we already uh, seen the SRT file um, that is the most universal. Uh, and also we have SBV, which is quite used as well. Uh, this is YouTube's automatic timing a tool that uh, just does uh, timing automatically and uh, um, we will we will see how it works in workshop 3 and uh, finally uh, SSA or ASS this is an advanced file format that uh, allows to style your subtitles and this is basically um, very very used as well by engineers uh, just to do the styling again the client uh, wants to see Again, uh, time for another workshop. Um, so here we will put it in the file we created in the previous video in MemoQ. But I should say here comes the complex part because uh, we need a filter. And this is not just a simple filter you can tweak and uh, just get what you want. This is um, at least I, I can't. Uh, this this requires our engineering team effort, and they create uh, the field that filters out everything that is not text um, and tags. Uh, and uh, but um, otherwise, it's just uh, it's, it's very simple. Just translate in a word your transcript into target language, and then. Uh, split it in subtitle edit and basically create the file in the same way we did and um, since um, 
we, we are not using CAA uh, to style our subtitles, we will use VLC instead. Again, VLC is a very good tool, uh, a free, um, efficient, and basically quite universal as well. Okay, so now let's jump to the video. In this video, I will show you how to translate the SRT file we created in the previous video in a CAD tool and also how to play the video together with your new subtitles. But let's go to the CAD tool first and we are using MemoQ here at Venga. I have already imported the file we created and if we are opening it, um, you will see that here in view pane, here is how your file looks like in reality. But I used a filter created by our engineering team that filtered out the number, the time codes, everything that is in grey. And now we only have a text. I have already pre-translated uh, the file into Russian, but what I want to draw your attention to is uh, here we have only one line subtitles and uh, you would need to export the file and put it in subtitle edit to see how many characters does each subtitle have. And if uh, you remember Cyrillic alphabet has a 35 character limit. So this line shouldn't be longer than 35 characters. In subtitle edit I saw that it was actually longer than that. Uh, the first one was longer and the second one was longer as well. So we would need to break the subtitle into two. And for that we use tags. Uh, this tag means a line break. And we will break the second one as well and we are ready to exclude our translation. And let us call it Here is my text editor. Don't be afraid. It is exactly the same as Notepad++. Uh, it shows that now our first and second subtitles both have two lines. We can close it. And now let us play the video. For that, open VLC player. First thing, go to Tools, Preferences, Subtitles, and Enable Subtitles. It will allow subtitles to appear on the screen. Now let us load the video. Let's hit Open Multiple Files, because we need to edit the video first, and then use a subtitle file. And we'll use the one we have just translated. And let's hit play. Current human capital management system. And you see it looks awful. Uh, you remember there are best practices for subtitle formatting as well. And um, here you see we already have white text. So we don't really see our subtitle. And to format it, let's go to Tools Preferences again. Subtitles. And here you can format your subtitle. Um, you see the text color is white and you can add an outline color and you can also add a shadow, add, add a background but actually I introduced all those settings manually because VLC has already preset uh, the optimal characteristics for your subtitles so if you hit reset preferences and um, they get back to default preferences and we should probably close and reload our file. Current human capital management. You see, this is these are default settings and the subtitles now look much better. 
Uh, the only thing I would change, actually two things, let's go to tools preferences again, subtitles. Let us add a background first. It will add a black box and also let's change our color to yellow to differentiate uh, it from the white text on the screen. That system was something that... See, it looks much better. Now let us play our video from the very beginning. current human capital management system was something that has been commonplace throughout the industry for at least a couple of decades. Okay, um, so now uh, let's jump to overview of uh, the video localization ways and what is um, better to choose. So it really depends on a lot of uh, factors, uh, but um, um, we will we will. Um, look at the first three later uh, because the market, the budget and uh, the deadline is, are all important and they're different for different types of uh, the localization. Uh, as for the type of content, um, uh, it also can determine which one to use because um, for like for example for your internal use, um, for example if you have educational videos you can use subtitles. But for external users, you would probably prefer um, voiceover if you have uh, marketing videos for your clients. Uh, so the type of content can also uh, influence your choice. And uh, with subtitles, you're already familiar. Um, and. Um, uh, in which countries uh, it is is it used? Um, uh, so sub subtitling is really common in Scandinavian countries and also in Mexico, Japan, Turkey, Portugal. Um, like for Scandinavian countries, it is uh, easy to explain because uh, people there uh, they speak English very well and uh, it's like their second language, probably very the most common foreign language. Uh, but for other countries, probably it's just uh, tradition. So people are used to read uh, uh, rather than just uh, hearing the voice over. And uh, this is the least expensive technique of all the three because uh, you already saw anyone can do it. And uh, basically, it can if, if you are doing it for yourself, it can cost you nothing. And it can be the fastest one as well. Uh, since uh, it requires a very simple workflow, relatively simple. And um, uh, let's move on. As for the voiceover, it is recording of translated content uh, using one or two voiceover actors uh, and we hear the original track. Uh, and uh, it is used mostly in our countries, Russian, uh, Russia and Eastern Europe, uh, Ukraine, Poland, Latvia, Lithuania. Um, just again, we are used to voiceover rather than to subtitles. And um, uh, voiceover is more expensive. Uh, this is kind of in between uh, subtitling and uh, dubbing. And let us move on to dubbing. Um, so dubbing is when um, the voices of the actors are totally muted and are replaced by uh, the voices of the actor in the target of actors in the target language. And uh, uh, it is again traditionally used in Germany, Italy, Spain, China, Brazil, India. Um, but in other countries as well, like um, some countries there, again in between, um, like in France, uh, subtitles are common, but dubbing is also common. So um, uh, this is the most expensive way, and uh, the turnaround is uh, the longest. And here I just prepared this slide for fun uh, because um, I I just came across this article that is. Uh, describing this phenomenon of uh, the former Soviet Union countries 
uh, that have their own um, way <laughs> of uh, of everything, but also of localization, uh, video localization, and um, uh, basically, um, we, so you know what I'm talking about. Um, uh, when Soviet Union collapsed, uh, when the Soviet Union collapsed, uh, just a lot of uh, foreign movies um, started coming to uh, Russia, Ukraine, other countries, and uh, they were so new, and we didn't have a market for that. Uh, but we were very eager to, to to watch them. So, and these two great. Um, so I don't know how great, <laughs> but uh, Leonid Volodarsky is an iconic uh, voice, one voice translator called the translator with the clothes spin on the nose and uh, uh, we can just play. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm just reading the questions. Um, uh, we can now play and just show to the international audience uh, what voice over talent we have. They are the world's greatest the life they've ever known. The only loyalty they've ever had. So um and uh, everyone from international uh, audience who see, who who listens to it, uh, who hears that, this, they ask, "What's that?" And basically, we should uh, explain that this is the like the greatest uh, voice uh, over translator, and that the whole well, probably several countries. I don't know, but Russia definitely uh, in Russia, the whole country watched uh, tons of the movies he made, and uh, uh, his. Um, Greatness is not only in um, not not only in translations that are great, but also that he was doing it simultaneously. Uh, he was just watching the movie once, and then he was translating it, interpreting it right on the fly. And uh, he, the quality of his translations are just very very good. Uh, so, and when we hear that, we we Remember nostalgia and 90s uh, and uh, these first Hollywood movies we all saw. And basically, um, uh, I don't know how many movies he made, but I think hundreds, tons of them. And the next uh, one is very famous as well, Goblin, uh, translator of The Lord of the Rings. And um, uh, he, he created voiceover texts that uh, are really funny. They are full of jokes, and they are uh, not too. Uh, they, are, they, they are related to the uh, original script, but not too much. Uh, and basically, they are very just. They are just funny, and uh, they are very funny to watch. Норму выполняет, тому талоны на усиленное питание. Арбайтен по-стахановски. Отражающее соблюдение дисциплины труда и правил техники безопасности должно стать нормой жизни. No, not yet. Uh, questions are not yet um, uh, started. Uh, we have a couple of more slides and uh, I just wanted to compare uh, the um, workflow for these three types of uh, video localization. Uh, and um, for subtitles, it is translate the text, produce a script, then produce a subtitles file, and uh, set appropriate timing, formatting, and then just do the final step of um, uh, just putting the finalized subtitles in, into the video, and that's it. Uh, and as a, again, it's very simple, and you now can do it by yourself as well. And um, our voiceover is um, just translation of the text and uh, producing a script again, but this time we need to involve uh, voice talents. 
uh, one or two or probably more. And uh, it all requires time and money. Mm, the recording uh, first, uh, then uh, the last step is uh, sensing the video and the audio. And this is a much more complex process than subtitling. And finally, dubbing is the uh, most complicated one because um, the, uh, first we need a very uh, interesting type of translation when uh, the words should actually match the movements of the actor's lips uh, talking in a different language and it's very hard to do and uh, um, it is um, the most expensive uh, one of these three. And then we need to involve qualified actors and recording technicians to do multiple voice tracks and uh, things like that. Uh, so, and uh, finally, uh, localization engineering also takes a lot of time, effort, money. Uh, but uh, the result we have uh, is, uh, is worth it. So, um, here, here is a, a short overview and finally I think we have our last five minute workshop. Here we are creating subtitles on YouTube and uh, we already used SRTs, now we are using SBVs. Um, uh, YouTube will generate this file automatically and basically everything you, you need to do is just upload your video to YouTube. And um, the, one, the, the very last one, um, the very last thing I want to mention is that um, these are, of course, uh, soft subtitles. They are closed, they're, they can be toggled off, and these are the ones we produced in the previous workshops. And um, basically, uh, now let us uh, move to the video and uh, just, you can use the files you have available from the previous. I'm still having this background noise. I don't know what it comes from. I didn't know my apartment was so noisy. But anyways, I can't do anything about it right now. And to create subtitles in YouTube, hit this CC button. And you will be redirected to the Creator Studio view. So this video looks familiar, I bet, <laughs> to you now. And uh, to create subtitles, hit this blue bar, add new subtitles or CC, and choose the language. We now have four options, and let us explore them from bottom to top. As for the fourth one, we don't need it because we are translators by ourselves, so we don't need to buy translation. But let us hit create new subtitles or CC. This allows you to create subtitles in real time and we have our transcript open. So let us just type subtitle here, paste it, and you see in preview, here it is, and hit plus. Our first subtitle is ready. Now let us adjust it. Play the video until the speaker stops pronouncing it. Management system was mm -hmm. And we can now... Oh, now we are redirected to the very beginning. Okay, now first edit. Let's edit it. Um, to, to add um, uh, a break here, just hit Shift-Enter. Perfect. And now let us play it. Current human capital management system. Mm -hmm. And it's still um, not there, but I can actually adjust it. You see here, this feature is quite cool. And we can now add another one. And here again. So, and you continue editing and pay, copy pasting and editing as you go. Uh, and so this, this option, let's exit it. Let us explore the next one. And my internet is so slow today. 
So let us explore Transcribe and Odyssey more. And what is quite cool here, so you are actually typing uh, along with the speaker and once you start typing, the video pauses by itself. I, I find it quite magic. Uh, so let's let's try it. Current human capital management See. system was something that has been... Anyways, it allows you to create a transcript and you already have it. Just copy paste. And now YouTube will automatically set timings for your uh, subtitles. So let's hit set timings and see how it does it. Now let's hit again. Oh, it's too early. Let's go back and hit again. Yeah, now. Now YouTube has automatically created subtitles and you see it is against any best practices or even worst practices because you will need to clean it afterwards anyway and probably you'll spend more time on cleaning than on creating from scratch. So this option. We don't like it. Let's exit it as well. And let us just explore the last one. But this time, let us choose Russian as language. And we have the last one. Uh, upload the file. Let us just upload the file we created. Subtitles file and the Russian one. Upload. Current human capital management system was something that has been common. You see, it's ideal. What we did in the previous videos works perfect here. And we can now publish. Subtitles published. Now go back to Current watch. Human capital oh, it already has 22 views. And uh, just enable subtitles by clicking CC here. Enjoy! The system was something that has been commonplace throughout the industry for at least a couple of decades. Okay, uh, now I'm ready for your questions, and uh, I think uh, Valentina will take over now. Yes, uh, thank you, Olga, for such a practical and entertaining story. And let me ask some questions from our audience. The first one was uh, by Valentina Kozireva, who asked about your opinion on the following maximus. Since uh, we need to keep a sub as short as possible, we should make it disappear as soon as the viewers have read it, so we don't need to wait for the speaker to stop speaking. Uh, what do you think? Is it, is it possible to switch the subtitles off before the speaker is finished? Yeah, uh, I've heard that as well. Uh, it also is quite justified. It just depends, uh, again, on what you prefer, what your client prefers, and also uh, we can cite rules here, but uh, when, you, when you see an actual subtitle, you will then take a wise decision. Uh, uh, because these are all, you know, like uh, uh, ideal situations that never happen in reality. So, as I said, you will have to trade off, to do trades, trade offs. We have so many rules and it's impossible to observe all, all of them. So in some cases, it truly really makes sense to uh, just to make the subtitle disappear before the speaker stops, uh, before the speaker actually disappears and stops speaking. And uh, in some cases, uh, it's probably, it, it, doesn't, it just doesn't look good 
just use your sound judgment uh, every time you you work on something just see how it looks uh, and um, uh, match it to the rule, golden rules uh, but use your judgment oh yeah thank you Th thank you Olga the other uh, speaking of rules the other question is uh, to keep the viewer distraction minimal uh, should we maybe avoid using extra punctuation? And one question from Alexander Vasiliev about uh, almost the same. Is it acceptable for subs to break some grammar rules for the sake of brevity and how the sentence should be organized uh, according to syntax rules, asks Dmitry. What do you think about that? Again, um there are no general rules here because it all depends on the type of content you are doing. On, uh, like, if you are just creating a subtitles for a personal video, it really probably makes sense to avoid punctuation marks and uh, to keep the subtitles easier to read just by eliminating, I don't know, uh, just additional elements, but of course if you are producing a subtitling, subtitled video for a Scandinavian country, uh, you would probably not like to, uh, to avoid punctuation marks because there are still uh, standards of language, universal ones that should be kept. So it all depends on your um, type of content, on your audience, on the uh, your objectives, what are you doing it for, and um, again, just uh, some people, and on just on your preferences, because some people, uh, they are purists, they will never accept to, um, to, to, to make a sentence without the full, full stop, or um, I don't know, just uh, they stick to the grammar rules, and other people, they are much um, more you know, like easy about it, um, and uh, in in our age of videos where we have tons of them, um, uh, it's uh, again no, uh, in in books there are strict rules, but with videos with internet now, just again use your judgment. And um, if you if you ask for my personal opinion, I would keep them because um, the, the, there the still should. Um, I think there should be uh, like standards that uh, probably we might want to keep and at least try to keep as much as possible because we are already losing grammar rules very uh, obviously and heavily and uh, so probably basically in, in my opinion for me it would be um, probably I wouldn't uh, do that but uh, I agree that in a lot of cases and probably in, in uh, most of the cases when you um, when you enable this option on YouTube, you will most probably not see the full stops at the end of the sentences. So again, use your use your preferences, your judgment, and um, that is just uh, I gave my opinion, but you may have yours. Yes, right, Olga. Thank you. I'm I'm myself from the purists camp, of course. And what about um, regulations? Asks Gleb. Uh, is there any ISO standards involved? Maybe maybe some uh, legislation in the U.S. Uh, you know about concerning subtitles. I'm sure there are. I'm sure there are uh, regulations and standards and special legislation, but as I said, uh, um, so our clients, they are, they are mostly uh, American companies and they already operate within these regulations. So the requirements they are giving to us are already based on them and we don't need to check anything. Uh, and um, so, w from this point of view, we are good. Uh, but as for I don't know, as for other countries, it all depends on the country. So in the US, yes, you're right, and uh, it's already it's already very well verified by I don't know by probably the lawyers or not the lawyers, but uh, just some co just competent people in the company who are definitely. Um, 
are responsible for that. So, but it's not our business because we are, what we are getting is, is already within regulations and uh, we, we have much more uh, difficulties with actually each, um, with, with, uh, with particular requirements like with uh, sometimes it's just not uh, too feasible from the technical point of view. But um, uh, we try to deal with that and uh, so basically we are managing quite a lot of subtitling projects. Uh, okay, uh, thank you Olga for this answer. And the next uh, question is about um, two languages at once uh, of subtitles like Chinese and English or Chinese and Russian, something like this. Have you ever um, maybe managed such a project? Excuse me, I didn't. Uh, uh, I haven't quite caught uh, which projects. Projects with uh, two, two or more languages at once, like a Chinese oh, French, I see. And mm -hmm. English French on the screen at once. Oh, I see. Yeah, there are there are these uh, projects. No, I haven't managed them, but yeah, I've heard of them. Um, um, our account manager Eliza Elsbieta, uh, she definitely managed uh, them, but uh, for me. Um, I'm not doing this, and um, uh, if if um, if you are interested, I can ask, and uh, I can uh, give uh, her answer in uh, in Facebook, on Facebook, or by email. Great, uh, thank you, Olga. Um, Konstantin Yakovlev, uh, uh, Olga is is off again. Let's okay, wait. I'm not uh, I'm not disappearing anymore. <laughs> Uh, that's what I've seen on my screen. Konstantin Yakovlev uh, asks, what format of subtitles do you put to the memo queue? What format? Uh, it was SRT file, subrip, uh, the most universal one. And this is the one we have a filter for. And um, you were right, uh, I, I saw in the questions, uh, it is a um, uh, regex uh, text text filter, uh, but after we translate, we have it translated and exported it back, our engineers work on particular formats the client needs because the client might need different types of uh, subtitles. Uh, most um, most uh, likely they will need um, SSA because they want subtitles uh, formatted more uh, kind of uh, a little bit more sophisticated way than uh, than we did with VLC because um, they have uh, um, requirements and uh, to observe them we have to produce SSA but this happens after we export uh, SRT from MemoQ. Uh -huh. So the mm -hmm. SRT is the most universal format which is uh, supported by MemoQ. Great. Correct. And Alexander, mm -hmm. Alexander Bondarenko asks, which of the so uh, software, in your opinion, uh, is the best for teaching students exactly from methodological viewpoint, not functional? What do you think about that? Sorry, I got distracted. Uh, can you repeat, please, again? <laughs> Uh, as uh, Doug is leaving now, I'll ask his question. Mm -hmm. w would you sa say that Subtitle Edit is the easiest program to okay. use? Uh, uh, probably, actually, the uh, Visual Subsync is also quite easy, but it is less intuitive, probably. Um, and uh, as far as I remember, it uh, allows AVI formats. So we were using MP4. Uh, for for the video and as far as I remember, uh, Visual Subsync is uh, AVI. But other than that, it's also good and it's it's a matter of preferences. I know people who prefer subtitle edit and I know people who prefer uh, Visual Subsync. But these are basically yeah uh, very good. Uh, both both of these uh, types of software are very good and uh, can be used and they are free. So just just use them. <laughs> and uh, speaking about software, a uh, question by Alexander Bondarenko. Which uh, of the software you think is the best for teaching students? 
uh, from uh, exactly the methodological point of view, not functional, but methodological? Uh, well, I think they are kind of both streamlined in this way, so they um, as as you as you saw in the video, I just uh, showed you in subtitle edit. Um, you just hover over uh, if, like a, a parameter, and you see uh, how uh, what it is, and uh, uh, you can study subtitles by this. Just using these characteristics, uh, like duration. Um, reading speed, uh, character limit, uh, so all of this is quite um, um, useful. Uh, and even, even if you are not using it uh, practically, you can just look at it and uh, see uh, the golden rules I, uh, I talked about. And uh, um, it, is, it is quite, uh, uh, it, 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 it provides a very good viewership of uh, what subtitle should look like. Yeah, thank you, Olga. Uh, the, uh, the, another question we have is about um, the situation where subtitles come across the title in, uh, in English, for example, as in your video, when the title of the lady on the video were um, hidden by the subtitles. Mm -hmm. now, what do you think? Uh, is it uh, possible to avoid such situation or we should not strive to avoid it at all because there are known like English speakers and they would not understand it at all. So what mm -hmm. do you think? I uh, Again, it's a matter of uh, uh, case by case uh, because uh, it, it depends on whether you want it to be uh, seen. Of course, probably if this is a, ma a marketing video, you might want to um, to have it displayed but uh, if sometimes sometimes it's not just it's just not possible or you can invent something uh, more complex that I did um, and um, again this is all uh, it is all very um, uh, practical it's all very hand off uh, hands off you just you just open it and just you just start working on it and you trying different things and uh, tweaking it uh, as you like and uh, so it, it is very it's very hard just to um, to give you um, the a set of rules that will be always applied it, it never happens so just look at how it looks like every situation is different every frame is different so um, I just uh, use your judgment as a uh, your aesthetics, <laughs> aesthetic judgment, uh, how, and also your sound judgment of how the viewer will, 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 will see it. Probably you might want to give it as, um, yeah, this is actually a good way, uh, you might want to give it um, in brackets, uh, just showing that this is not uh, a spoken word, but, um, and you could just give it in, in the target language uh, as a part of the subtitle or in the source language, but also as a part of subtitle. It's it's up to you. Yeah, right. The brackets uh, are nice ideas. Um, Olga, the last question is from Gleb. Mm -hmm. uh, he asks, what is the price for subbing in Venga Global per minute? Uh, if, of course, you can share oh. such information with us. First, of, of course, I don't remember, <laughs> simply. But I also can share it uh, with you, so you can get a free quote. <laughs> there is a button on our website. Uh, but it, of course, depends on a lot of factors. And, um, again, every case is unique. Uh, um, depends on the deadline, on the language. Uh, uh, but um, um, we are doing uh, we, we are we are usually doing uh, like um, projects in big volumes. So if it is not just a, just one subtitling project from I don't know a new client, uh, they usually come in uh, um, in series. And uh, for example, a client starts localizing the videos for different markets, and uh, we got we we get a, a lot of subtitling projects. Um, and it is all, of course, uh, it is all, of course, um, 
um, taken into consideration uh, while quoting because the price of course depends on a lot of factors. Okay, thank you very much Olga for answering mm -hmm. all of these questions and I want to thank you our audience uh, for such amount of questions. As for me, I've got a new angle on subtitles. Thank you. And I pass the mic to my colleague Stanislav. Olga, maybe you want to tell something to your audience before we pass over to Stanislav and our closing information. Okay, so first um, I asked uh, this question uh, and actually Valentina, you offered to ask it and uh, it is a very good uh, idea to ask the audience before um, the uh, the presentation to understand uh, uh, who who your audience are. But of course, there is no like a, a typical universal uh, again <laughs> a person uh, because everyone has different uh, level of um, like uh, some some people are tech savvy, some people are more. Um, into arts, but I tried kind of to, to kind of balance uh, my presentation, and I was really impressed by the number of questions and by the number of comments that showed that uh, basically um, a lot of you uh, understand a lot about subtitles, and uh, um, it is great. Uh, um, I myself, before I actually started doing localization, I never dealt with it, so. Um, uh, it's it's I'm really I really admire the fact that a lot of you know so much about subtitles and uh, um, it is it is great and it is uh, it is it was just a fun to present uh, thank you for your comments for your smiles for your support uh, and for your thoughtful questions thank you very much Olga thank you very much dear colleagues now you can see the resources which I've been telling you about in the very beginning of the webinar. If this is a recording of our webinar, the links are clickable so you can continue enjoying our materials. To stay in touch with UTIC, please be invited to Ukrainian Translation Industry Conference page in Facebook and the UTI Conf group in Vkontakte. Here are the links to English and Russian speaking communities in the social media. And uh, let me announce our next webinar, which is going to take place on the 10th of December with Kima Rossi, the Head of Research and Innovation Sector of the European Commission DG Connect Unit. That one will also be held in English, and the registration link will be published soon. We look forward to meeting you then. Dear colleagues, now on your screens you can see the feedback link. Please follow it to share your opinion on this webinar with us. We strive to perfection and your thoughts are highly appreciated. We would like to say thank you to the Language Solutions Pro Company for its partner support of UTIC 2015. Stay tuned and follow us, follow us on Facebook pages and visit our website. Thank you for being with us and see you soon.